Sarah, how are organizations like Cancer Support Community addressing needs of patients surrounding supportive counseling remotely. It's been a big shift um, in um, doing our work remotely, um, be that through um, platforms like Zoom or over the phone. Um, I think that people are not going into the office. Um, They're connecting with patients and caregivers um, virtually. Um, I, I think that um, many organizations, whether they're hospitals or community-based organizations like the Cancer Support Community, are also taking a look at how they are at this whole issue of healthcare disparities and how they can better serve um, the underserved population, whether that's a particular um, group of people or whether it's people in rural communities who are very hard to reach you know we're we're talking a lot about serving people virtually or over the phone but in many cases people don't have access um, to either smartphones and or um, internet so i think that's a big shift and i think that's something that will change in the years to come Um, i think there's a lot of uncertainty about what we will go back to Um, The cancer support community primarily serves people in a face-to-face environment. Community is part of our name. We build community face-to-face. But will that continue in the post-COVID era? Dr. Rayo, we are adjusting to new tools and methods, whether in person or a telemedicine visit. Patients need to feel empowered to ask the right questions. Can you speak to how your organization is empowering and enabling patients to make the most of their visits? I co-founded a company called A Bridge. The technology helps people create summaries of conversations with their clinicians, whether that's in person or increasingly on the phone or on video uh, calls like this. It's uh, for those in-person conversations, people can simply download the app. It's free and they can use the app to record a conversation in person. And what the technology will do is it will automatically transcribe the main medical parts of the conversation. So it'll be sort of selective in picking out those medical moments from the conversation and transcribing them, creating bookmarks that people can use to go back to those moments to re-listen and review. Um, The aspiration, the ambition here is really to help people, number one, better understand these conversations, but number two, also give them, help them, uh, help all of us better act upon the advice that we get from our clinicians, those care plans. And Sarah brought up a a great point. I think, um, especially over the the recent months, we've learned that not everyone has access to the latest phone. Not everyone has access to Wi-Fi. Um, In that context, and not everyone can, can travel hours to see their, their clinician. And so in that context, we made sure to build this technology in a way that could work beyond the app 